Teddy. Well, uh oh, never mind. I was going to introduce you to the newest member of the family. Maybe later. Howdy, YouTube. I'm going to run and go get a big auger from a customer. This is a six foot diameter earth digging auger, and I'm going to do two things to it. First, I'm going to hard face the edge of the flighting all the way around, and then I'm going to convert his reamer system from a square tube inside square tube design to a, I guess we'll call it a tab and slot design. Not quite sure. You'll see what I'm talking about here later. But first, let's run and get this auger, get it unloaded, and then I can start hard facing it. They went and ground off all the old hard facing, which is awesome. Saves me a lot of time. But unfortunately, we've had a lot of moisture lately and it is all rusted up again. So I'm just gonna take it to the flat disc on the uh, angle grinder and just shine it up. I'm gonna draw a little bit, figure out my pattern. It, I gotta at least have some reference points on there. Otherwise, you know, I'll start making my zigzag longer or shorter. And then to heat it, to get all the moisture baked out of it, I'm going to use this guy. I'm going to try it. I don't know. We'll see how that goes. That might be a complete disaster. Uh, something that size is going to take, it's going to soak up a lot of heat. But you've got to get that moisture baked out. That is probably the, the biggest trick to hard facing, is just getting that moisture out of that top layer. That's where all your porosity comes from, unless you got gas problems or something else. But... Um, I'm using uh, Hobart's, what's it called, Fab Tough 960, I don't remember the exact name, something like that. That's kind of, uh, it's almost a general purpose type hard surfacing uh, wire, but uh, I did the first auger for this guy just because that is all I could find locally, but he is really happy with it. He says that, that's, that is lasting a very long time for him. Uh, I was actually going to go to a different grade that's more used for like dredge buckets and stuff, but he said this is lasting plenty long. He's very happy with the lifespan of it. So uh, this stuff's a little cheaper. It's available locally for me, so I'm just going to keep running it. You can get into a whole debate about uh, what pattern to use. Like I'm just going to go zigzag since there's a little edge. You know, I've heard some people on YouTube videos lately say, oh, that swirl pattern and the fancy designs that people do is just a waste of time and you're just getting fancy and showing off. That's actually not true. There's been a lot of research done that shows that the crisscross or zigzag patterns that people use is not the most effective. Um, those, I don't know what you call almost like scroll shape, actually gets a longer life than just putting a crisscross hatch mark on it. So. There's a reason why they do those fancy designs. It's not just for show, it's actually for longevity. Well, you've probably seen enough hard facing at this point in the video, right? Uh, what else is there to say other than I spent about five hours getting all the way around that auger. Just got done drawing the mounts for the reamers. Uh, I'm gonna cut one out and try it. And I'm gonna use my one inch scrap piece of plate here. I looked at my book. It should be weighing about 160 pounds right now. I'm gonna lay this thing down and get onto it with a magnet. Heavy. 
I'm really nervous about this. I have yet to cut one inch thick material with this. Um, there's been many times that I've thought, I just need to throw this piece of scrap plate on here and make a cut, see if it even does it. But now I have to do it or else I'm gonna be in over my head. I can probably get out my cutting torch and do it all by hand if I have to, but don't wanna. All right, so I'm all set up. Let's see if this thing works. Literally the first time cutting one inch with this table. This is one inch by three inch flat bar. This is what we're gonna be mounting the reamers to. This will be the reamer system. And this will be on the auger. This will be on the top of the flighting, not the bottom of the flighting. This will be up on top. And uh, so I went and dunked this thing to see if it fits over this. And uh, it fits almost perfect. Um, hard to show you here, but this corner, because of the way plasma, you know, cuts corners poorly, it didn't make a nice square corner right there. So I can literally just hit that with the uh, angle grinder and that'll be perfect. It'll fit in there. Um, since this code is so simple, I might go in and see if I can put a pause in these corners and let the, uh, you know, plasma string catch up before I start moving the other direction. There's a few other tricks I can do, but sometimes the pause is usually the easiest and, you know, on a simple little part like this, the G code's really simple. So I'll see if I can just put a quick little pause there and that might make all the difference. Otherwise it doesn't need any other adjustments because I don't care if this is rounded off right here or right there. I mean, none of the other corners matter, so, yeah, I am tickled pink. All right, I have done a bunch of layout here. I mean, you can see all my lines and scratches and stuff in there, trying to figure out where the reamers need to be. I was just going to go off of the square tubing here where the old reamer system was, basically a receiver hitch style reamer system, and uh, the customer said, no, don't use that. He had a local welding shop put those on and he says they're not in the right place. And so I started all over figuring out where center was and did everything and sure enough, they're not in the right place. They need to be exactly across from each other. And I guess the best example would be, you know, a twist drill bit. If you got one side, you know, longer than the other and they're not quite exactly uh, straight across from each other like they're supposed to be, you know, that drill bit's going to want to walk make a different size hole, that kind of thing. Your pressure's not right. Same thing here. Um, probably even worse at this scale, I don't know. I think I can do it just sitting like this. I think I can put my mag drill underneath and come up because there's not enough room between the flanges for me to stick my mag drill in there. Um, of course, the other side's sitting on the ground over here. So I'll have to get out my crane and flop it the other way. Uh, we wanted it behind the square tubing there. Um, just get it up a little higher and it's going to be on top of that flange, not underneath like the old ones were. If it ends up kicking up a rock or something, it hits that square tubing. I think you can see there how bent up it is. That's because, well, it gets hit and also uh, they've had to take it, take a hammer to it a few times to straighten it out to get the reamer in or to get the reamer out. So uh, not a good system. Made me up a... mock piece that'll fit in there um, I don't know the dimensions you know length for the reamers that I'm gonna make him but I do know it's gonna be one inch by three inch strap iron so I can do that and then I got my lines here where I want these things to set of course it's not all lined up perfectly right now but it'll be something like that so that's what I'm doing um, you like my bolt Apparently I have no one inch bolts in stock. 
That's actually the bolt I used on, I do believe, my very first paying job when I moved to town. And that was when I had to remove that extension out of that post hole auger. Lights changed a little bit because it's been a few hours later. I wire wheeled it, make it look all pretty. And uh, other than the splatter, which was definitely a bit more splatter than what I was hoping for, but I think I am very happy with that weld. Stocked in there nice. The puddle at the end didn't crack. Looks like it's got good penetration. Whatever, not perfect arcs for my ripples, but they are close enough. I mean, I'm considering that bead is as wide as my finger. So, nice. That ought to stay on there. Um, I did not triple stack these. As you can see, that's just one pass. But I tried to triple stack like back there and everywhere else that I could reach. And of course, I can't weld in here because uh, that piece has to slide in there. But pretty happy with it. So I'll pick this thing up and spin her around 180 degrees and do the other side. So the customer brought me the bullet teeth, I guess they're called bullet teeth, uh, to make the reamers out of. These are the same teeth that are on the front leading edge of that auger. He decided to use these. He likes them a lot better because, uh, you know, he can just replace these. I think they're like 13 bucks a piece. Whereas when, whereas with the old uh, paddle style reamers that he had set up for that, he was having me hard face them. I forgot how many hours I ended up taking to hard face all that yeah he can just replace these whenever he wants is the whole point of this <laughs> so he could not get the sockets that go over it he called his supplier and they are shut down due to covid right now so he asked if i could make them um, i had no idea what they were but looking online kind of looking at the auger that's out here it looks to me like they're just a straight cylinder you know smooth bore I can't see anything special about them. Looks like a one inch diameter hole in there and they just slide in and then it's held in by force with these dimples on this spring pressure ring. And then there's a little bit of a chamfer here that this actually butts into. That chamfer does match. It looked pretty simple so I think I'm just going to try making one. Um, I was going to use the old Rockford lathe over here. I haven't used the big beast in months. It's actually been since like April since I used the poor thing. I went ahead and cleaned it all up, got the ways all nice and clean. There's just lots of dirt and paint and stuff on it. I keep it covered, but even at that, it's still getting dirty as can be. So oiled it, cleaned it all up, and that actually gave me time to think about the project. And I realized that I don't really think this is actually going to be a very good lathe project. I think this would actually be a whole lot faster to do this in the mill. So, uh, yeah, my poor Rockford has to sit here a little bit longer waiting for another job. The outside of the holder for these things is major an inch and three quarter. Um, I have a little bit of two inch left. So my original thought was to go ahead and turn this down to inch and three quarter, but I was thinking about it. I was like, that's really not that big of a difference. I don't think it's going to matter. 
But then I decided the easiest thing to do would be just to simply drill it off to the side a little bit, right? I think the reason it's inch and three quarters is just because of the diameter here. Um, you know, you kind of want, you don't want a bunch of extra body sticking out as this thing is digging, because these don't dig straight up and down, they actually dig at an angle like this. So you need to make sure that, that clears the ground as it's going by, like this edge here doesn't hit. All right, I was gonna machine these square, but uh, I don't see the need for it. That is like spot on. Hard to get the light to shine under that at the angle you're at, but I mean, that is spot on. No need to square that at all. I took the time to set the bandsaw proper before I uh, made these cuts and definitely paid off because that saved me a lot of machining time. Now I can, I can just use it as is. So there it is. I was actually going to ream it to one inch, but that drill bit is like spot on at one inch because it is perfect. So, gratuitous. Yay. Apparently I sharpened the one inch bit correctly last time. All right. Um, it does need a chamfer on it. I haven't quite decided I'm going to do that yet, but yeah, I got in a hurry and pulled it out of there because I wanted to see if it fit on this thing, but I need to pop that ring off of there. Oh yeah, fits perfect in there. Yay. All right, now I just gotta figure out the chamfer. That shouldn't be a big deal. I thought about it for a while and decided that I'd take my boring bar that I built and just regrind a chamfer on it, I guess. Make it a chamfer cutting tool, single point fly cutter, if you will. Uh, so hopefully this will work. I think it's clearing on that back side there, a little bit sticking out, but I do think it clears, so. Okay, a little coat of oil here, and uh, see if this chamfers at all. I feel like I'm missing something. I feel like I'm forgetting to do something, I don't know what. Nice and smooth, zero chatter. I actually got my grain right on that. Look at that. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Wow. I'm so happy with that. Eh, 0.19 maybe. And that looks to be about... Eh, 0.19. Oh, it looks exact. All right, well, I'm gonna take that out of there and see if it works. Oh, beautiful. Oh, wow, that actually locks. You see that? It actually locks, it doesn't turn. It's actually got enough of a contact that it it tries to lock. Oh, that's awesome. It's like a little mini Morris taper, right? That is perfect. Alrighty. Well, now I gotta make the other one. I uh, won't bring you along for that one. I'll just show you welding this onto the end of the flat bar. That's all I gotta do next, right? Something like that.
start filling it in. Got the teeth in there. These things are ready to go. Let's go slide it into the auger and I'll show you what it looks like. So they just slide in there like that and your bolt goes through the hole and obviously that'll be tightened up later. Probably use a self-locking nut. And uh, I left plenty of room on there so he can drill more holes in that and give himself different settings, whatever he needs. But he said he needed them set for three inches out right now. And that measures exactly three inches, so I hope that is right. So I guess that ends this video. Uh, I wish I could show this auger in action or something, but I think he's using this clear up in North Dakota, so a couple states away from me. And uh, I probably won't be able to get to see it in action. Probably won't get any footage of it in action for you. So hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you all in the next one.